There are various misconceptions that families have when it comes to the cost of college. Uh, one of the chief misconceptions that I experienced over the years was that families thought financial aid would cover all costs, period, no problem. They didn't stop to realize the various aspects of financial aid, how financial need is calculated, the fact that financial aid is a supplement. It doesn't replace the resources that a family might be able to contribute. So there's a whole process by which a family applies for financial aid. There's a whole process by which it is determined whether or not the family, the student, will show financial need. So through that whole process, looking at the cost of attendance, and I mentioned earlier, let's say a public four-year university cost of attendance figure might be $21,000. So that formula will look at the cost of going to that college, and then based on the information, income and asset information that the students and parents enter on their free application for federal student aid, the methodology will derive an EFC, an expected family contribution. So the difference between the cost and that expected contrib family contribution is need. There are a lot of need-based financial aid programs. Everyone wants grant money because it's free. It does not have to be repaid. But not everyone will get grants because if they don't have an appropriate level of need, they are eliminated from consideration. So the more assets, perhaps then the less likelihood that the student will qualify for that type of financial aid. There are student loan programs that are better if you qualify for the need-based loan. Everyone who applies for financial aid will qualify for loans, but they won't all qualify for the need-based component of the loan, the direct loan program. So if a, if a family, if a student has no or little financial need, they're going to have few options. And the, the issue there, I think, is if you don't have the availability of the kind of financial aid you need, and you don't have the resources saved to help you cover the cost of college, you're pretty much going to be limited to student borrowing. And then what that results in is a student coming out of college with higher debt, long-term repayment obligations, and when that happens, of course, it puts off those other things that once you get out of college, you want to be able to do. You want to buy a car. You want to buy a house. You want to get married. You want to have children. And if you have this horrendously high student loan debt casting a shadow over you, it does make things a little less comfortable.